everyone, my name is Joanne Kennedy and I'm a naturopath specialising in treating patients with the MTHFR gene mutation. So I've put together a presentation to discuss how the MTHFR gene mutation and methylation cycle issues impact estrogen detoxification pathways via the COMPT enzyme in the liver. So the presentation is going to cover what is the MTHFR gene how having a mutation on the MTHFR gene can affect estrogen detoxification. We're going to look at liver detoxification of estrogen and how the COMPT enzyme plays a big role. We will look at causes of excess estrogen. We'll also look at the really interesting link between estrogen and histamine, as well as the signs and symptoms of excess estrogen and some diet and lifestyle tips that you can take away. So first of all, I want to cover what the MTHFR gene is. So the MTHFR gene encodes the enzyme methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase. So this enzyme catalyzes the synthesis of 5-methylene tetrahydrofolate. So that's methylfolate, which is the bioactive form of folate that the body uses. So what that effectively means is we have a gene, the MTHFR gene, it provides the code to the MTHFR enzyme and that enzyme takes folate from food and converts it into methylfolate. So we know people have mutations on this gene whereby they can have up to a 70% reduction in, in enzyme functioning. So once the body makes this 5-methylene tetrahydrofolate, which is methylfolate, the active form, this methyl group, is used for the remethylation of homocysteine to methionine, which is the precursor of S-adenosyl methionine, which is known as SAM or SAM-E. You can supplement with SAM-E. Um, and SAM, SAM-E, is the body's major methyl donor. So this diagram will make it a lot easier to understand. So here we've got methyl tetrahydrofolate. MTHFR or methylfolate. So the, the, the enzyme that converts folate from food into methylfolate sits here and it's governed by the MTHFR gene. And as I was saying, if you have a mutation in the gene, you can have problems with, with, with conversion of folate into methylfolate. So once you have methylfolate, it moves up this pathway and it binds up with methyl B12. Okay, so that's really important. So people that have gut issues don't absorb their B12 very well. If you're not eating animal protein, then you really need to be supplementing with B12 because you will be deficient, very likely if you don't. So why this happens is for homocysteine to be remethylated to methionine and then methionine goes on to make SAM, S-adenosyl methionine and SAM is the body's major methyl donor and it provides the methyl group for enzymes, such as the COMPT enzyme in the liver, which is part of phase two liver detoxification of estrogen, which I'm going to be talking about. So here is a really simple diagram, which I did put together myself, um, just to make it really simple so that we can understand how our hormones are synthesized. So they're all synthesized from cholesterol. So we need cholesterol. Um, so the first step is the conversion of cholesterol into pregnenolone, then into 17-hydroxypregnenolone, um, which is the precursor for all of our steroid hormones. Okay, so it's then metabolized again via different enzymes into progesterone, which then converts down into our cortisol, or it moves into DHEA, which then goes on to make androstenedione, testosterone, estradiol, estrogen, and estriol. So here are our, our estrogens down here. Estriol is actually the estrogen in pregnancy. Estrone is the estrogen in menopause. And estradiol is the estrogen in women, menstruating women, before they go through menopause. So here are our estrogens, and that's all well and good, but what can cause problems when it comes to women's 
hormone balance and causing problems with estrogen overload in the body is a problem with the detoxification pathways. Okay, so this next slide is actually a diagram of the methylation of estrogen via COMT in the liver. Okay, so this is all happening in the liver. So we've got our estrone and our estradiol, which use the same phase one enzymes. Here are our phase one enzymes, the CYP enzymes, and then the phase two enzymes, which are the methyls, the COMT enzymes. So I'll just talk about estradiol to make things simple. Okay, so once we use our estradiol or the, the estradiol that's not actually used, it's metabolized via three competitive pathways, CYP1A1, CYP1B1, CYP1A2, into these catechol estrogens. So here's 2-hydroxyestradiol, 4-hydroxyestradiol, and 16-hydroxyestradiol. So these catechol estrogens are actually what we call intermediate metabolites. And these intermediate metabolites are highly toxic until they go through phase 2 liver detoxification pathways. And phase 2 liver detoxification pathways rely heavily on methylation, which requires the COMT enzyme, the catecholamine methyltransferase enzyme. Okay, so phase two actually makes um, these toxic metabolites safe for passage through the, the, the bowels. So we want all of these pathways to be working. So this, you know, this presentation is, is, is about COMP, so I'll be talking about that, but we from all, seeing a lot of gene reports, many people have mutations in these CYP enzymes whereby they have problems, even up here, whereby they're not actually detoxifying estrogens well or they're detoxifying them down the 4-hydroxy and the 16-hydroxy pathways instead of the 2-hydroxy pathway, which is the estrogens that we like, the healthy estrogens. These estrogens are... Uh, it cause damage, carcinogenic. There's research that they are carcinogenic. So what we understand is that uh, supplementing with DIM will actually shunt estrogen down this healthy pathway. Okay, so more on COMPT. Okay, so what else do we need to know about COMPT? So the COMPT enzyme is what we call a methyl transferase, hence the MT, catecholamine methyl transferase and what we need to make methyl transferases is a methyl group and this methyl group is supplied by SAM or SAMI the major methyl donor which I was talking to you about so as we would as we know to make SAM you need methylfolate so problems with MTHFR can cause a reduction in methylfolate you need methyl B12 so gut issues can cause a reduction in B12 if you don't eat animal protein you might you highly likely low in B12 this pathway also needs zinc, methionine, and trimethylglycine. So what we're looking at here, if all of this is in place and working well, we need our homocysteine should be sitting at about seven. So if the homocysteine's high, it's being trapped, it's not moving through the pathway. So it's not moving through the pathway because you'd be deficient in B12, you've got gut issues, you've got issues with the MTHFR gene where you're not remethylating your homocysteine to methionine. Okay, so what we also need to consider is that many people have a genetic mutation on the COMPT gene itself. So this is interesting. If you've had your gene report, you can see that you're minus minus for COMPT. And this actually means that it's fast acting. Whereby if you're plus plus for COMPT, this means that it's slow acting. And it's those with the COMPT gene plus plus that tend to have issues with detoxifying estrogen. However, one of the key things to understand, and this is really important, is that epigenetics, so what is happening in the environment, will slow down the COMPT enzyme. So if you're, if you're exposed to too many estrogens, 
environmental estrogens, then even if you're a minus, pumped minus, minus, the amount of estrogen in your body, the enzyme is overloaded, it can't cope, so it acts like it's plus plus. So what is going to cause a buildup of estrogen? So xenoestrogens, so these are toxic estrogens, these are in the environment, okay, they're in plastics, especially BPA, so that's the cling wrap, take away coffee lids of your coffee cups, disposable water bottles, tin food, these are all lined with BPA plastics, which are, are terrible for your body, terrible for methylation and your DNA, it actually blocks your DNA methylation as well as building up estrogen in the body. Now, obesity is also a problem because that increases the estrone, which is the estrone in adipose fat tissue on your belly. Um, this can happen to men as well, funnily enough. So unhealthy liver, whereby your liver detoxification processes are just not working effectively because the liver's overloaded. So that can be just an exposure to environmental toxins, excess caffeine, excess alcohol intake, or you simply have a lack of protein because all the enzymes in the liver need amino acids to work effectively. Now, failure to ovulate. So this is a big one, especially in women with PCOS, as ovulation produces progesterone and progesterone opposes estrogen, it buffers estrogen. So if you're not ovulating, you can have problems with, it adds to the load of estrogen in the body. Now, bowel function, so once your liver detoxifies the estrogen, they need to be excreted in the bowel. So the liver's done this amazing job of taking your estrogens through phase one, phase two liver detoxification, then they're conjugated, made safe for passage to the bowel, and if you've got dysbiosis, an imbalance of gut flora in your, bowel, in your large intestine, constipation, then you're not actually getting rid of these estrogens, um, and they become deconjugated and toxic again to the body. The body recognises them as a toxin and they'll go back to the liver for recycling. So it's building up that load of estrogen in your body. Also a lack of bile acids, as bile acids help remove estrogen from the body. So they bind, they bind estrogen and excrete it. So what can actually impact the production of bile acids is methylation, as you need methylation to be working properly to produce phosphatidylcholine and taurine. So both of these nutrients help make, well, they make bile acid. Um, and if you've got problems with methylation, you're not making the bile acids, you're going to have problems excreting your estrogen. So this is a really interesting link, which is, is actually quite relatively new, um, but it is clinically, it makes a huge problem addressing it. So what we know is that estrogen increases the release of histamine from mast cells and th that they're your immune cells and, and histamine can cause havoc in the body. It causes headaches, it causes migraines, it causes insomnia, anxiety, depression, eczema, acne. It causes gut issues, burning gut, bloating, nausea, reflux. Uh, it causes loose stools. It, it, it affects smooth muscle, it can cause period pain. So it, it, it's, 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 um, you know, it can cause massive problems for people with histamine. Um, so estrogen increases histamine, but what we also know is that estrogen actually down-regulates the Dow enzyme in the gut that helps clear histamine by the gut. Okay, so we can really see that, you know, the mast cells are releasing histamine, the Dow enzyme is overloaded, it's not working, so you're building, building up your histamine. Then histamine stimulates the ovaries to produce more estrogen. So you can see this as a really vicious cycle, and I sit in clin clinic often. So women, you might be treated for estrogen dominance previously, but if the histamines aren't being addressed, then it, you're, you're not getting on top of the problem. So estrogen to histamine to estrogen to histamine, it's, it's a really big cycle. Um, now histamine is also cleared by the HNMT enzyme, histamine and methyltransferase enzyme. So again, we need a methyl. We need a methyl group for that enzyme to function. Um, we also need to understand that histamine is released from certain gut bacteria so Klebsiella, Citrobacter, very histamine-releasing bacteria that can be found in the gut. 
Um, so if there, if or even any sort of infection in the gut will increase the mast cells to release histamine as part of inflammation. We've also got our fermented foods and aged foods, like miso and tempeh sauerkraut, aged cheeses, the alcohol. These are all really high in histamine and can be really contributing to your um, problems with estrogen. Okay, so here are our signs and symptoms of estrogen excess. Heavy periods, that's a big one. Painful periods, sore breasts, bloating, fluid retention. We've got our PMS mood changes, premenstrual dysphoric disorder, sleep disturbances premenstrually, headaches and migraines. This is mainly due to its influence on histamine. Fatigue, weight gain, anxiety, depression. Irritability is a big one. We also have fibroids, fibrocystic breasts and endometriosis are it's sort of influenced by estrogen. Oh, there's headaches and migraines again. I've put it in twice. But ladies, if you're getting headaches and migraines premenstrually or at ovulation, it's because you're not detoxifying your estrogen through the liver and it's building up histamine and histamine is causing terrible problems with headaches and migraines. So here are some diet and lifestyle tips. So we obviously want to ex decrease our exposure to diet to xenoestrogens. So these are environmental estrogens, plastics. They're also in herbicides and pesticides and cosmetics with parabens. So check the labels. We want to increase our intake of brassica vegetables. Now, they're broccoli, kale, cabbage, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, as they contain a compound, a compound called indole-3-carbonyl that supports that phase one liver detoxification of estrogen. It's a really wonderful compound. Um, we really want to make sure we increase our intake of fiber and make sure the fiber feeds the gut microbiome, makes it healthy. Fiber also increases peristalsis, which helps the bowels move. Um, increase your intake of folate rich foods. These are green leafy vegetables, lentils, barley, beans, eggs, liver, and sprouts, just to make sure you know, you're getting good conversion of folate into the methylfolate. We really need to eliminate folic acid from the diet. So folic acid is a synthetic man-made form of folate. It blocks the uptake of your natural folate. It's fortified in Australian wheat and it's in a lot of retail supplements. So ensuring that you get folic acid out of your supplement regime and your diet is really important. If you're interested in this, you, sh you can. I've written more about that on, um, on my website as well as in the NTHFR presentation I've done on YouTube. So supplementation with methylfolate may be necessary for some people. Um, so people with MTHFR gene mutation might do very well supplementing with methylfolate. However, it's not without side effects, and, and these can be quite serious. They can be a, a, an increase in anxiety, an increase in depression, a, you can get headaches, um, you can, you know, insomnia. So you really need to be um, supplementing um, with methylfolate under the supervision of a trained practitioner in, in NTHFR. So avoiding excess alcohol intake. So this puts a load on our liver. It also depletes B vitamins and the B vitamins are essential for methylation, not just B12, but all your other Bs, B2, B3, B6, B5, B3, they're all really important. Um, make sure you're eating adequate animal protein. So grass fed organic if possible. This is to ensure you get enough vitamin B12, zinc and methionine, which are really important for methylation. So that's to make your SAM, to make your methyl donor so that you've got a really well acting comp enzyme. Um, we also want to avoid inflammatory foods such as sugar, processed foods, high dairy and excessive meat intake. Obviously keeping caffeine and alcohol to a uh, a minimum. This is because inflammation puts a real burden on the methylation pathways. So we want to reduce our heavy metal exposure so we can reduce the intake of fish more likely to contain mercury. So this includes tin tuna, farm salmon and barramundi, prawns and swordfish are all high in mercury. We want to avoid cooking in aluminium cookware and avoid stripping lead paint in old houses. This is because heavy metals pay, take they, they, play, they, they place a huge burden on methylation and glutathione, which is going to really impact your detoxification pathways in your liver. Obviously, detoxify your home. You want to be avoiding plastics and tins lined with BPA, as I said. Use natural cosmetics and cleaning products and drink filtered water. 
One of the main things that's really important is, is to manage stress. And this is because methylation is very important for the stress response. And when our body is stressed, they're going to be using these methyl groups to deal with stress and put other things like liver detoxification pathways on the, on the back burner. So whatever it is for you, exercise, mindfulness, meditation, yoga, deep breathing and ensuring you've got adequate sleep. So ensuring that these, these lifestyle principles are put in place is going to really help you preserve your methyl groups, um, which is so important for liver detoxification of estrogen. So that's all from me and I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.